Hello friends, and welcome back to part 20 of our Fast API tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to be touching on uh, path operation configuration. By the way, I don't know if you can tell from my voice, it's probably fairly obvious. Um, I have a little bit of a cold, so it's going to sound a little different. Um, maybe I should start singing songs like about my sticky shoes or someone, something like that, like Phoebe does. Um, also, the mic is in a different place, so it might sound a little different there as well, but, you know, time will tell for that. So, let's jump right into it. Uh, as you can see here, we've got our app up and running. We have no, uh, no operations in the spec yet, so we're just going to go ahead and get going. So, let's start off by creating a class of item. We're going to set the name is going to be a string. The description is going to be a string or none. Remember, we're using Python 3.10, so we can do this. We don't need to use the optional uh, flag. We're going to say price is a float. Tax is a float or none. We're going to set none to default. And tags is going to be a set of strings that we will just initialize an empty set. So now let's go ahead and create a route. App.post items. Let's put the slash on the front of it, just for fun. Why not? Response model is going to be equal to item. And status code is going to be what? Let's see, do we have it in, imported up here? <clears throat> it does not look like oh there it is their status okay so just as a friendly reminder if you don't remember what all of these are we can use our intellisense i'm using pycharm again you can you know i'm sure this is in uh, vs code as well so we're going to use the 201 created status um, we set the actual path item is going to be an item and we'll just return the item now, you'll notice we're, we're not handling any of that, any of the, the configuration in the path operation. We're actually putting it up in the, um, in the decorator instead. So now we go back over here. We refresh our page. Oh, okay, here we go. So we can see here, as we've seen before, we will get a successful response of a 201 because that's what we've set as the status code and it shows the actual schema here for our response model. Remember if we got rid of this and we refreshed our page we would see a 200 and the response would be a string. Okay, This is all stuff we've seen before so I'm just going to refresh this. Now the next thing that we're going to add to this, though, that will provide a little bit more um, organization, let me actually create the routes first, and then I'll explain what we're going to do with it. So we'll do app.get items <clears throat> async def read items return, and we'll just say name foo and price. 42 and I deleted that by mistake. Okay. And then we'll say another app.get. We'll say users. And we will say async def read users. And we're just going to return username Phoebe Buffet. You know, in, in honor of my my deeper voice right now. So we go ahead and refresh and we can see we've got a whole bunch of just we've got the three routes. That's all fine and good. What we're going to do though next is we are going to add in tags. And what we can do here is we can say this is going to be in items. The tags for this one will also be in items.
and then down here we will say tags equals users and what this does is this allows us to um, just organize things a little bit better we hit refresh over here and we can see we have our, our set of items routes we said we have our set of users routes okay um, we can take this a step further and up here let's um, declare uh, class tags we'll make this an enum and we'll say items equals items users equals users and now here instead of just it being a string it will be tags dot items here this will be tags dot items and here this will be tags dot users now for those of you who are wondering, and let's just save it and refresh. Now you can <clears throat> include multiple tags. I mean, we're, you know, we're, this is a, a list right here. So we can add in a second tag here. We refresh and now our items, our read items route will show up in both places. In this situation, obviously we don't want to do that right because this doesn't pertain to users but there very well may be situations where one route is going to you know you might have a you know get logged in user route that might associate with users might also associate with auth if you want to have some auth routes or something like that okay uh, moving right along uh, let's go back onto our post route because we're going to we're going to do as much as we can in here just so that we can kind of visualize things because there's a lot that you can do um, in in the route configuration. So now here let's set up a summary create an item and we'll say description create an item with all the information name description price tax and I think this um, and oh I went to the wrong place and a unique a set of unique tags and let's um, can we wrap this yeah let's just wrap it to make it look a little bit better now we're gonna hit save and we are going to refresh our page again. Now we should only have, I took the users tag out of this route, so we should only be here. We still have nothing here, but here we have our nice little description here. And you notice this says create an item. If we just hide this for a second and we refresh, you notice this says create item because that's what we named our path operation function. It will convert it into a nice, you know, a nice readable format. But if you want, you can actually set this yourself. You can say create an item type item because we're actually we're actually setting this class right here. We're calling it an item class. So you see, we say create an item type item. So that's one way that you can do it. But this this description is great for just a you know quick and dirty. Um, text um, but what if we want something a little bit more informational if you will so I'm going to go ahead and hide this description and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some doc strings and for those of you who don't know what doc strings are you should still by now you should um, pretty sure we've covered it at some point in time or another in this um, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to put our main text here, create an item with all the information. Now, you saw this param and this return were automatically generated when I, you know, hit enter after doing the three quotes, because when you're creating doc strings, you're doing it usually for, um, you know, documentation online for users. Um, and, and you might actually care about, um, you know, you might care about the arguments and the return type. In this situation, we don't right now. I mean, I'm sure we will at some point in time. But let's 
do name because what we want to display to the user who's using our API, not the actual function itself, but the API, we want to display the information. So each item must have a name. We're going to say description. Nope. A long description. Description. Price required. Tax. And you might be wondering why I'm adding in the double stars and the, the hyphen at the beginning. You will see. If the item doesn't have tax, you can omit this. And finally, tags tax and tags i feel like sebastian should have probably chosen a different thing to put in there but whatever a set of unique tag strings for this item we hit save we go over here and refresh our page <clears throat> excuse me and you notice the reason why i used this and the double stars is because the um, the Swagger documentation that shows up here will actually interpret this as Markdown. So if we were to do just a single star instead of a double star, and we refresh, it's italicized. If we were to do an underscore instead of a star, and again we refresh, we get italicized. A double underscore should be um, bold-faced, and that's what we get. Okay, so you can do all that sort of fun stuff in here. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to do too much more in terms of in terms of markdown. Um, the next thing that we can that we can add in here, and I'm going to leave the doc string here. Like I'm going to leave all this in here as much as I can. This description, I'll leave commented, but we can, you know, you can probably get rid of it if you want to. Um, we are going to call the response description, the created item. Again, we hit save, we refresh our page, and we go into here, oh, the created item. You'll see it's showing up right down here. The created item, there we go. Again, if we get rid of this just to see what, uh, what it was looking like before, it just said successful response, which there's nothing wrong with. Um, if you're, you know, this is the sort of thing where if you're building this API for either public consumption or you're working on the back end and you've got, um, uh, you know, you've got front end folks who are working on a separate client and, you know, you don't communicate as well as you should, um, then you would want something like this where you can actually display this sort of information to people. Um, the very last thing that, that we're going to touch on, um, I think, yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to do too much more because, again, we're getting a little long and, you know, my voice is a little scratchy. Um, we're going to add in one more piece of functionality at dot get elements tags equals tags dot items async def read elements return item id foo it will update our formatting and you can see here we've got our read elements right here we try it out it's all well and good it does exactly what we anticipate it's going to do but what happens if we want to again we're building this for public consumption we want to let either the public know or our front end users know that this is no longer going to be a valid um, a valid endpoint. Well, we can say deprecated equals true. We hit save. So this still shows up. We can still try it out. We can still use it. So it's it it's still there. It will still work. But the concept of of something that's deprecated is it's. It's no longer in active use. It is going to be removed in a future release, you know, something like that. So you want it to still be there because you don't want to implement a breaking change. Let's say you're doing a, 
you know, a, a, a minor release instead of a major release. You know, major release, you'd have breaking changes. People need to update their endpoints. Minor is less so. So, you know, you don't want to break people's systems. So that's what this would be for. Uh, deprecated is true. There are a whole bunch of other options here. Um, you can uh, you can look into them. Let's go into app.get. We can see a whole bunch of stuff. Tags, dependencies, summary description, all this sort of stuff is in here um, that we're not going to, um, you know, we're not going to touch on all of them right now uh, because I think I think we're good for this video. We're at about 15 and a half minutes. So I am going to say see you later. Uh, next video we will um, uh, we will deal with an encoder, um, JSON compatible encoder, which will then get into um, you know uh, updating with um, uh, request body and stuff like that. Sorry, I'm sick. My mind is just not right there. Um, okay, I'm going to call it time of death at 16 minutes and five seconds. Have a good one.